Now let's um, look at some examples to, to, to illustrate some of the paradoxes uh, that, that happen when the independence axiom is violated. And so we cannot rely on expected utility theory. Um, the Allais paradox is very famous. The example I'm going to give you is taken from a prospect theory and analysis of decision under risk, very famous article by Kahneman and Tversky, published in 1979. Here is the example. You have to choose first between two lotteries, A and B. Lottery A gives you $4,000 with an 80% probability or nothing with a 20% probability. Okay. Pro uh, lottery B gives you $3,000 with 100% certainty. Okay. Now if I compute the expected utility of A, okay, applying expected utility theory, I get 3,200. 4,000 times 80% plus 0 times 20%. And if I compute the utility of lottery B, again using expected utility theory, I get 3,000, right? Now, here, if I was choosing according to expected utility theory, I should choose lottery A because it has a higher expected utility, but as it turns out, most people choose lottery B, empirically speaking. And one of the reasons is that uh, there tends to be a premium to certainty, right? So the fact that this $3,000 here is given with 100% certainty is... Is, uh, is given extra weight in terms of decision making. Now second example, choosing now between lotteries A prime and B prime. And lottery B prime, I'm sorry, lottery A prime gives you $4,000 with a 20% probability and nothing with an 80% probability. Lottery B prime gives you $3,000 with a 25% 20, certainty and zero with a 75% certainty. Okay. If I compute the expected utility of A prime, I get 4,000 times 20% is 8. 800. If I compute the expected utility of B prime, I get 750, right? 3,000 times 25%. So okay, now if I'm choosing uh, in accordance with expected utility theory, I should pick A prime because the expected utility of A prime 800 is greater than the expected utility of B prime, right? Now, and as it turns out, people do pick lottery A prime in this situation. Now what's interesting here is that sometimes people behave in accordance with util expected utility theory, as in the second example here, but sometimes people violate it, as in the first example. And um, again, one explanation for this is that when probabilities are close to zero or close to one, there is extra weight given to um, those outcomes. So there is a certainty premium. Uh, why is this a violation of the independence axiom, by the way? Well, we can think of it this way, that if we consider the first lotteries, we have lottery B, which is preferred to lottery A, and we can mix each of these with a third lottery, which is going to be L double prime, which is getting zero with 100% certainty. 
So let's apply the independence axiom. The independence axiom says that alpha, a combination of lottery B and lottery L double prime should be preferred to combination of lottery A and L double prime and since L double prime is simply equal to zero I'm going to drop it right so I should have this result now you will notice that if I pick alpha equal to one-fourth alpha times lottery B is actually equal to uh, B prime, lottery B prime, right? Because it's the same, the same outcome with a probability 25%, which is one fourth of one. And similarly, alpha times lottery A is actually equal to lottery A prime because it's the same outcome, but now the probability 20% is one fourth of 80%. But so, but I've just told you. So we should have lottery B prime preferred to lottery A prime, right? If the independence axiom were to hold, but I've just told you that in practice, actually here in this example, people chose A prime over B prime, right? So this is a violation of the independence axiom. Now let's consider a second um, paradox violation of the independence axiom, which is called Machina's Paradox. This example is taken straight from uh, the book, Maskelet, Winston, and Green, on uh, page 180. You are considering three outcomes, either a trip to Venice, or watching a movie about Venice, or staying home and doing none of those things. <laughs> Let's call these things T, M, and H. And let's assume that your preference ranking between these three outcomes would be that the trip is preferred to the movie, which is preferred to staying home. Now let's, uh, let's consider two lotteries. You're choosing between two lotteries. Um, the first lottery gives you a trip with a very high probability and watching the movie with a very small probability. Let's pick our probability alpha equal to 0.1 percent. So lottery A gives you this trip with the very high probability plus small probability of a movie. Lottery B gives you uh, the trip, again, with a high probability plus small probability of staying home. Okay. Now, the, the independence axiom tells you that the first lottery should be preferred to the second lottery and the reason here is because considering that M is preferred to H the combination of M with a third lottery T should be preferred to the combination of H with a third lottery T right so we should have this lottery preferred to this one however um, it would not necessarily be irrational to prefer the second lottery, lottery B. And the reason for this is that if you were to not get the trip to Venice, um, you would presumably feel very disappointed and you would feel perhaps miserable about the idea of watching the movie. And so perhaps you would prefer uh, staying home altogether and trying to forget about your lost opportunity to travel to, to Venice in spite of the fact that uh, this violates the independence axiom. So here, central to this example is the idea of a disappointment that leads your 
preferences in the sense to 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 reverse or at least be in conflict with the independence axiom. Um, the idea being here is that you would feel a sense of uh, disappointment. <laughs>